why. This is an animation since 7 o'clock tonight. Look how the rain is falling over the same areas repeatedly, and there's no sign that it's about to end. Let's zoom out a little bit on this and look back down to the southwest. That rain extends southwest of San Antonio. It is still developing there. It is still moving along the same train track, if you will. The training of these echoes will go on for some time to come. Our computer models last night that were suggesting we might see some, you know, 8-inch rainfall totals in some isolated areas uh, may have been on to something. Look at this. Back across the Rio Grande in Mexico, there's more energy coming up as the main storm system is still out to the west. I want to take you to the storm profiler radar here, and we'll zoom in and talk about really uh, hyper-locally here what's going on up in Williamson County. You folks are under a flash flood warning until midnight while we're talking a lot about northwest Austin right now because that is such a heavily populated and driven area. You folks out here in rural areas of uh, northern and eastern Williamson County, you are in danger as well near low water crossings because you too have been seeing a lot of rainfall over the last couple of hours. Heavy rain in the red area is extending from Granger now all the way back down into the Round Rock area. Still raining there on up into Milam County, too. A little flashing symbol there. Let's take a look at that. That is a National Weather Service storm report that has just come in. Uh, 4.5 inches of rain in the last 2.25 hours. That is in southeast Round Rock and north Pflugerville. It looks like it's just south of 130 or 45 there. So uh, any low water crossings in that, that area are going to be dangerous, too. Let's check this one out. That's west Round Rock, just west of uh, uh, I-35. Four inches, between 3.75 and four inches in the last four hours. Street flooding reported on Deepwood wow. Drive. Okay, that's the latest from the National Weather Service storm reports as we come south into Travis County. Travis County's under a flash flood warning, but again, you folks in the eastern part of the county, you haven't had a drop. Briar Cliff, you haven't had a drop. You've got some coming up from the south, but the main threat right now is paralleling and west of Interstate 35 in Travis County, a paralleling and west of uh, Mopac and Loop 360 out toward Lake Travis. Of course, as usual, most of this is falling below Lake Travis and won't affect the lake level, to, level at all. We still have that, well, it looks like that severe thunderstorm warning has been canceled. That doesn't look like any severe weather right there other than the threat of flash flooding. Very heavy rainfall, though, continues there in Hayes County, some of it now in southeastern parts of Blanco County also. Okay, let's go on to the uh, weather maps here, and I want to give you the bigger picture. First of all, the flash flood warning continues uh, until midnight for the county you see in red. Looks like Milam County had just been issued to the flash flood warning area as well. Isolated five to six inch totals of possibility. Slight risk for an entire area overnight for a few severe storms with large hail and damaging winds. There's a little boundary in the area right now, but the main front is still way out here in West Whoa. Texas. A lot of moisture flowing across the state associated with a low moving into the plains that stretches all the way back to the four corners. This is the main part of the storm beginning to move out. That's why we're seeing the rainfall really increase right now. That end, because it's tapping into the moisture from what was Hurricane Raymond. Every time this happens, we get heavy rain and flash flooding, and it's happening again. Tropical moisture from the Pacific, from the Gulf of Mexico, upper low, front, all colliding right here over central Texas. Our computer model was right on the money, saying that everything would be focused up. Looks like it's in the shape of a hurricane. That's exactly that right. S. Now look, we go to 4 a.m. It's still here and shifting just a little bit to the east, and so these rainfall totals may really add up and may shift a little bit. Oh, Jim overnight. Spencer, you're a great weather man. To move on out of here and notice we clear out. This is one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We've got sunshine out, so little trick or treaters tomorrow night ought to be in pretty good shape uh, if their neighborhoods aren't flooded after what goes on here tonight. And this is what our model said too today: four to five inches of rain right here, up and down I-35 in the metro county. So it looks to be pretty much uh, on the money. Our Halloween forecast still calling for clear, cooler conditions, temperatures in the 60s tomorrow night as this stuff moves out of here. All right, we've got a lot to do, so let's uh, skip a couple things here and get you on into the uh, forecast. I want to show you, first of all, quickly the uh, pollen count. I know that's important to a lot of you. The molds quadrupled today at 8,000. Mm. Clearing, then beautiful weather as we head into the weekend. Wonderful weather for the game on Saturday. Oh, no. Daylight saving time will end Sunday morning at 2 a.m. And we have another system that looks pretty promising for more rainfall early next week. All right, tomorrow morning it is a morning that you will not want to miss KXAN News today. This flash flood threat could be affecting a lot of things when you wake up. Tune us in. We always have weather and traffic every 10 minutes all morning long. Hey, where am I? Hello everyone. Uh, oh, okay. I'll turn it down.
You guys have a great day. Um, my hand seems to be blocking the camera. Bye, everyone. I'm Robert from Hobby Man ZXC, and I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed the forecast.